I am uh, the president of Intelligence Support Group, which is a company geared up for law enforcement government agencies. We manufacture and uh, supply training for electronic surveillance equipment. And uh, we've been in business uh, since the 80s. And then after 9-11, we uh, have a spin-off company that's called International Security Group that uh, sells security services, consulting services, engineering design services to uh, general public, Fortune 500s, high net worth individuals. After 9-11, we had so many people calling us up asking for help that we decided we better address that issue you know, for two reasons. One is because there's a, a definite market need and because we thought it was the right thing to do because uh, people needed some place to turn and look for that. So uh, why we didn't run it out of the same company is because Intelligence Support Group manufactures what we call Title III equipment here in the States, which is eavesdropping equipment for government, and we wanted to keep it specifically separated uh, so that the public sector doesn't have access to any of that or have any knowledge of it, and we have different support teams. And We're finding out that the, uh, the more elite, the uh, the more elite client wants to keep what he has and wants to make sure that uh, they're protected. The, uh, we're, we lost a lot of our, uh, what will we say, middle, middle business, and, uh, but our elite business is starting to kick in gear real strong. We, we do a lot of design work. Uh, for instance, there are several states around the uh, world, actually, that we designed uh, security systems in excess of a million dollars. But it combines an IT room, it combines a safe room, a command center. And um, for instance, uh, it's a little bit unusual what we do because we are engineers. We're not, how you might say, married to one product line. So we'll pick the best of the best and we'll integrate it into one system to make it an eclectic system. For instance, we'll uh, use a lot of uh, thermo. Uh, cameras, but our thermal cameras might be uh, not of the same manufacturer where we're making, we're using for our PTZs. And um, some of the things that we've come across, uh, for instance, we have what we call CCNRs out here, which are regulations for the community, and uh, they'll tell you you can't have a gated property. So we had one client that had a driveway that was about a mile long, and they wouldn't allow him to put a gate. And he had a large 25,000 square foot estate on the property but he could not put, his gate had to be welded open. And naturally that was a problem because you would have people drive up the driveway, looky-loos. So we came up with a design process that had uh, faux trees, there were fake trees that actually fell over and became gates. <laughs> and uh, when the proper people would drive up through the sensors we had embedded in the vehicles, the trees would pop back up. So, uh, you know, technically it wasn't a gate. We launched a product called Cryptol. We have a constellation of over 10 servers in uh, 10 different countries, all not the United States. And uh, what we have done is user-initiated encryption. So the phone call is 100% secure up to the cloud. From the cloud down, if the person is on another secure Cryptol phone, it will be 100% secure both sides. If not, it will go out in the clear. So the target is always encrypted. This is patent pending. It's available in the market. It's been launched. It's using uh, AES encryption technology, which is a proven uh, technology. And our methodology of how we did it is patented. Website, and it's uh, cryptal, K-R-Y-P-T-A-L-L, dot com. One model is a what we call a hardened phone. It looks like a VOIP phone. It goes out over the IP. And uh, that is in a hardened case. And we also took into consideration the EMI, the electromagnetic interference that might come out of the case itself. So we harden the case uh, so that you're not leaking out information, so to speak. And then it also has, we have a hardened iPhone where we modify the iPhone for the encryption. And uh, it's a subscriber-based service also besides the product. I'm on the board of CUSA, which is the Center for Unconventional Security Affairs. Uh, Dr. Richard Matthews is the, uh, the professor in, in charge of that. Uh, we're doing a lot of research projects, uh, everything from uh, research projects abroad in Africa and what have you to what's in our own backyard. We've been uh, dealing with uh, you know, heads of security for various corporations and we deal with them a lot primarily because we bring to them uh, countermeasures 
electronic security uh, countermeasures, TSCM services. We also help them with uh, training consulting. And uh, we've noticed since 9-11, the security director now is somebody uh, of a higher statute. And uh, there's always the competition between the security director and the IT director. You know, and they try to say it's one and the same. But since 9-11, that has changed, and it's really a definitive mark where the security uh, director has a, a much more uh, responsibilities and a role to play within corporate America. Uh, right now, we're finding out, uh, besides uh, some of the foreign uh, intelligence gathering that's going on, we're finding out that it's very easy to access a piece of gear that will allow you to gain intelligence, whether it's audio, audio video, or over the computer for data. And uh, especially on computer uh, security, uh, also tracking systems. Uh, I can't tell you, you know, we went for many years finding very few transmitters. Uh, recently, this past year, we're probably uh, about 50% of the times that we're called out, we're finding a tracking system on a vehicle that wasn't put there by the owner. Uh, biotech com companies, anything to do with cutting edge technology is definitely at risk. And the country has been very laxed. You know, it, we always had the attitude in America, it can't happen to us. That doesn't happen. Yes, it happens in France. Yes, it happens in China. Yeah, but it doesn't happen with us. And uh, now the realization has hit home. It's happening. And with the uh, computer hacking, uh, your, uh, your person who's attacking you is not even on, on American soil. So it's more common. It is happening now. And I think for the first time it's being recognized. Uh, I think today you have to provide a well-rounded quality of service because you're being attacked on different fronts or you have the possibility of being attacked on different fronts. In other words, you have your uh, perimeter, then you also have your digital. In fact, we have a program we title it G Digital Perimeter, where we actually do red selling for a team. We'll go in, and years ago it was, you know, check out the locks, check out the safes, check out the documents, how it is. Now there's a whole other realm, the digital side. You know, how is the data being stored? Is it in the central location? Is it in the cloud? How is it being protected? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's, it is a hybrid today. Uh, fully IP on the, on the newer systems. We'll integrate, we'll do a hybrid if there's existing uh, cabling there that we would, might want to use. Uh, because you have to remember, here in the States, it's a little bit different than the UK and some of the other countries. For instance, in the UK, there's a lot of uh, coax, there's a lot of RG59. Out here, we were late in picking up the CCTV craze. Besides for some government installations, most of the craze came in after it was Cat5. So they're already ready to go right into IP. You know, a lot of people out here are using a Cat5 with Balins. So it's a natural turn, switch over to the IP, keeping your wiring infrastructure. Are you finding that just in California, though? Uh, you know, I'm finding like maybe the others, such as Vegas, uh, New York, probably got it, older systems there. New York has older systems. Vegas has older systems. It depends on the development of the area. Uh, a lot of places uh, really were turning over or coming in on the cusp. In other words, they were coming in when people just started using Cat5, you know, which has been almost 10 years now. It was pretty common in the marketplace. Uh, so that they were using it because it was uh, less expensive. Most of the market here is still using analog. I mean, it's not even 50-50. It's probably 90% of the market is still using analog. Digital is new, new, new. It, it's so new. Uh, your larger systems had digital, but what we're finding out is the customer, the client, doesn't always know. Analog, digital, they all tell you now we want a digital system because they know about it. We want an IP system. But what no one is telling you is, is the quality of the camera they want to use. So they'll say, uh, yes, could you change over to that new digital system? Well, there's people that are specking lower quality digital cameras. You know, and the key is where I see the industry going is that you're going to have super high def. With super high def, you're going to be able to take a larger field of view and electronically zoom in. Now, will that, where will that be good? That will be good in applications where there's less guards. So that's the only way you could change your manpower. You will see the price start to drop as it becomes more commercialized, as the cameras are readily available. 
Uh, naturally, bandwidth is always the question. My website is uh, isghq.com. Much appreciated. Excellent. Take care. Bye-bye.